was probably the most difficult loss of the year. They were up by six with under a minute to go. They end up losing in overtime. Sam Mack almost single-handedly put him away, and he figures it was enough to cost him a postseason tournament bid, but not Coach of the Year honors for the Southwest Conference. And we're ready to go. Sasser goes against Outlaw, and it comes off to the Red Raiders. Clemens quickly gets it back out front, and this is Collins to run the show. Chad, a sophomore from San Antonio, over to Jason Sasser, one of the many outstanding freshmen on this ball club. Hughes, considered a veteran, although just a sophomore. And then down in the corner to Brad Dale. Cougars extending the defense in the early going. And the turnover by Texas Tech. Leads the other way and out of bounds. The both teams turn over as Jesse Drain had trouble with a handle. Houston Cougars go right to a full court press as they will also have the half court pressure. But right now they want to find out if the Raiders can handle the ball right from the beginning. Back to Collins. And you always and he nearly turns it over. Saves to Sasser. It should be a bucket. No. <laughs> I'm premature when Outlaws on the floor with that. I beg your pardon. Leads the league in block shots. Sasser. And now Hughes, and he gets the tray to go. And that's a good sign for the Raiders. He's averaging 14 a game, but had just 10 against Texas and 9 against Rice, the outing before that, and it's 3-0 Texas Tech. Texas Tech opens up in a man-to-man, -man, trying to create some problems for Outlaw down inside. But boy, does he get the shooter's roll. Yeah, the Whirlpool special on that one for Outlaw, and it's 3-2 Raiders. Dale. The foul called against Houston, the first of the night, and it goes against Anthony Goldwire, the junior out of Riviera Beach, Florida, 6'1", 182. He's a junior, and you talk a lot about outlaw. You have to, but here's the guy that initiates the offense for Pat Foster. Foster, the dean of the Southwest Conference coaches, and this is seventh year at Houston. We've got 18.30 to go in the half. It's 3-2, Texas Tech. Cougars continue to uh, have some pressure in the defensive uh, zone trap. Second turnover for Texas Tech. Play right into the hands of the Cougar defense. Drain tried to shovel it in the middle, lost control. Last touch by the Raiders. It'll go back to the University of Houston. Charles Outlaw in the top cat four categories in the Southwest Conference is one of the reasons he's there. Blocked from the side. Outlaw keeps the basketball in play. And then on the other end, he's just as effective, looking for the basket, gets the nice touch, nice roll inside. And as we come back to the live action, three-pointer from David Diaz. And don't get too upset, you'll probably see some more. He hit six in the victory over SMU on the weekend. He averages 18 a game, that is tops on the club and sixth on the Southwest Conference charts. Well, you saw again the full court pressure by Houston. They drop back into zone defense, but here's what they want to do. They want to run when they get a steal or a transition, or go to the transition from a steal, rather. Goal wire, a little rocky, but he got it to fall, and Houston, after giving up the opening tray by Hughes, has got seven straight and leads it by four with 17 and a half to go in the half. They beat the press this time. Flemons gives it off, and a nice pass from Will Flemons. And Brad Dale converts to makes it at making a 7-5 ball game. Well, you saw a little senior leadership there by Will Fleming down inside. Found the open man as opposed to going for the shot himself. This is Smith, good steady player. Now to goal wire. Looks inside to Outlaw, and he will establish position, believe me. The tray from Smith won't go. Rebound, hard fought, and Brad Dale comes down with it. Good positioning against Outlaw. And there's Outlaw. You never know where you'll find him. Now you see why he's so versatile. He plays the point of the defense. He drops back in the middle on this 2-1-2 zone trap that they have half court. And he plays anybody that comes in the lane defensively. He's third in the league in steals, number one in block shots. And he's also among the league leaders in assists. The jumper from the corner is good. And Dale has got a couple of early buckets here. That's a deuce to tie it up at seven. Well, that's got to be encouraging for Coach James Dickey. He needs some outside scoring threat. Well, Fleming, the guy down inside, has really been tough, but he needs some help. 16-11 to go in the half. Houston and Texas Tech. Last year was 83-80 overtime here. And out of note, saved by Hughes and nicely done by Lance, the sophomore from Georgetown, Texas. The crowd gets into it here with the Lubbock Coliseum. 
Garcia. Sasser. Clemens. Knocked away by Drain. It could be a break. Smith gave it up nearly after he crossed the timeline. Goldwire can't convert. And Sasser the other way for the Red Raiders. Tied at seven. 15-37 remaining in the half and back out front to reset the or start the offense, I should say. Chad Collins, a sophomore from San Antonio. Well, Sasser got the big rebound, brought it down. He's getting increased playing time. And Tech losing a couple of players at this point. Hughes with it inside and wide open Will Clemens. Well, that's been one of the problems for Tech. They have not been able to get the ball down inside to Will, but this time they had no problem. And remember, he gets it in the low post. He, uh, post where he's awful hard to stop. Six straight for the Raiders to give them the lead again. And the air ball, the other side by Smith, goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Cougs. And we'll have a substitution following the timeout. We'll take a break. Raiders lead it 9-7 here in Lubbock. You know, I enjoy performing, but I also enjoy working out. That's why I go to General Nutrition Centers and get Cybergenic Phase 1. You get a training tape and a manual plus five state-of-the-art supplements. Hey, if this guy can do it, you can do it. Get Cybergenic at GNC. Standing on the first tee, you sense a difference. This is Innisbrook, one of America's most remarkable golf resorts. 63 holes on three championship courses, including the famed Copperhead. After the round, return to your luxurious suite, dine in exceptional restaurants, or relax by one of six pools. But right now, it's time to focus. It's time to play. Innisbrook, Tarpon Springs, Florida, near Tampa. The one, the only. It's a crazy world. There's light this and light that. There's even light gasoline. That's right, light gas. Stuff that makes your engine knock and ping. 104 plus octane boost turns light gas into raw power. 104 plus knocks out knocks and pings, removes clogging engine deposits, and increases horsepower up to 30%. It'll even help you beat that pesky freeway traffic. Turn your engine loose. Do some boost. Texas Tech was six straight to regain the lead, and now on top 9-7 here in Lubbock, Bill Land McCoy McLemore, and here's one of the reasons. Well, you get a look at the reason Houston breaks down on defense. They pride themselves on the half-court zone trap, but that time the Red Raiders were able to find an open door. They go into Will Fleming. He's the guy that wants the basketball. And so far, Texas Tech out rebounding the Cougars with five. Cougars had one, four assists for Texas Tech, only one assist for the Houston Cougars. And both shooting the ball well here in the early going. And that has been a problem for Texas Tech of late. They come in with a respectable 47.8 percentage, but recently they have struggled. The long one won't go this time for the Red Raiders, Lenny Holly, and quickly the other way, Diaz. And you'd better pick this guy up, 38 percent on the three-point shots and makes it 10-9 as Houston regains the lead. Well, that usually signals a full-court press coming up, but when you get through it, you get an open layup. Dale, he got fouled, and it won't count. The full-court pressure is designed to cause you to either get the 10-second count in the backcourt or steal the basketball, but it's not designed for the team to get it up. And when you get by that, you have an open layup. Boyd Wiles here with a not real smart foul. Uh, as the guy was going up, and Coach Pat Foster yanks him out of the lineup, he comes in with Rafael Carrasco, wants a little bit more size on the back line. James Dickey visiting with... Hughes, and now here's Dale, and you see the numbers there. Look at this guy. Tonight, Dale has already got seven. His only double-figure game was last week with 11 against Rice, and he's got seven of the first 12 for the Red Raiders. A foul stops the action at the other end. Pat uh, Foster looking for victory number 133 in Houston. It's just 66 losses, and co-champs of the league a year ago, and then won the tournament. Yeah. 
and Smith is cold and nearly going. He can't hit this one. Hughes with a rebound and averaging better than three boards a game. He looks more comfortable tonight than he did. And as I say that, he throws it to us. Just going to say that he's looking a little smoother tonight than he did against Texas on Saturday. As that game was an 18-point decision. Texas winning, but was a five-point game with about three minutes to play. And that's been Tech's problem in their four-game losing streak is the last five minutes of the game when things have fallen apart. Well, it really has, Coach uh, James Dickey, talking about them hurting themselves with that type of move again. They find an opening with the defense. Carrasco's basket precedes the foul. And Houston picks up the personal. Diaz gets the foul. His first, team's third, and Pat Foster looks on with a tie game at 12 and 13.39 to go. James Dickey, 23 and 20 in his second year now as head coach here at Texas Tech. Well, coach Dickey and the coaching staff are trying a new strategy to get the basketball up the court very quickly when they get it on the out of bounds to get away from that full court trap. Oh my goodness. That one will count, but it might be worth giving up the two points if nothing else for the highlight, but certainly the mental part later on. Look at this. Great drive by Lance Hughes. Even greater block here by James Outlaw. Looks like he was going to take a little different angle coming right in your lap here. Outlaw goes up, but he touched that ball above the cylinder. That's goaltending in any league in America. Two great leapers. Tech gets the ball back on the steal. There's Hughes again. Did not get fouled. Someone got a touch on it. I think Outlaw. And then Outlaw with the steal. To go wired. Here come the Cougs. nearly 16 a game and he ties it again at 14. It's wild and woolly here in Lubbock. Hughes. Kicks to Dale who's had seven early points. Half of the Red Raiders 14. Hughes fakes the tray. And now Sasser. He tied up by Smith. Holly to Dale. Shot clock at 15. Sasser may have overpassed. He had a wide open 10 footer and certainly Jason Sasser is the type of guy that can convert those. He averages 10 a game. Out of bounds. It goes back to Texas Tech. James Dickey applauds as Dale, Dale comes out and Austin checks in. Alan Austin should remind you if you haven't heard Devon Ashley and Nate Jackson are not with the club tonight. Jackson is gone for the year due to academic problems and Ashley is suspended for breaking team rules. Right before the shot clock expired a foul called and Hughes will he go to the line or are they saying it was before the shot? He'll shoot a pair. How about it? We'll take a look at the replay. Well, Foster let me show you an NBA move here. Lance Hughes is going to fake his man up in the air. While the guy's in the air he steps under him. Gets the shot off with the body contact, and that would be called a continuation move in the NBA where you score the basket and get one more. Smart move by Hughes coming across with that across the court with that left hand move. Yeah, Pat Foster saying, I agree with you, McCoy, but continuation's not allowed here in the college ranks. And tell you what, Bob Dibler, though, made that call one of college officials top of the list type. So it was a pretty well officiated game here tonight before it's all over. 15-14, Raiders with the lead, and the substitutions continue. Sasser coming out. Smith checks in, another one of the much-talked-about freshmen. Coy from Hale Center, Texas, averages 10 points a ball game, and he is the top shooting three-point guy in the league at 46%. The jump hook won't go for Carrasco. The follow is good, though, for Diaz. He is now with eight for the Cougars. They lead it 16-15. Steal by Houston. Outlaw to Goldwire. And the Cougs lead it by three. That's the way they draw it up. They want the steal from under transition basket. That time it worked to perfection. Charles Outlaw with the big hands. You see him playing the point here on their half court zone trap. Goldwire's got a half dozen. Smith wide open. Yes. So Coy Smith converts. He had a season high 25 against Midwestern State early in the year. And Clemens takes it away. Holly to Hughes. 
Clemens has thrown up a couple of threes this year. Smith can't convert. And Diaz with a rebound. He averages 4.8 of those a game. The other end, Drain, no. And it's run down by Hughes. And up and down we go with an 18-17 Houston. Smith the save. Go wire the steal and the foul on Hughes. And they don't agree. <laughs> Well, they mean the fans here. Because Pat Foster agrees on the call as they came up with another steal. Got a break on the foul on the side by the Tech Tech Red Leader. 18-17 with a timeout called. The Cougars lead it. 10-36 to go in the half. We'll be back with more of Southwest Conference Hoops on Prime. Get me a boat to take me there. Silver sands on a white hot beach. Hey, what do you say if I get this little number here for only $2.99 for 60 months? Remember him? He's the salesman who sold your last car. Did you enjoy the experience? But you can trust me. Last year, we did a survey of the Metroplex car owners and found the number one reason people did not enjoy the purchase of a new car was the hassle and the confrontation of the transaction. At the North Texas Autoplex, we don't have salesmen. And the low price you pay is right on the windshield. So come visit us. I think you'll like the way we do business. Dream Team. Yes. Dream Team. Gold medal players like Robinson, Jordan, Yow, and Drexler, Malone, Stockton, Pippen, and Barkley. The Houston Rockets. Break to use the Dream Team Plus. Tenth game starting at 100 bucks. Wow. Yow. What a deal. What a deal. Plus rookie sensation Shaquille O'Neal. And all the rest. Call 627-0600 to order the Dream Team Plus. It's the 10th game package you've been dreaming of. Defense has been a big part of this one in the early going, McCoy. Well, it really has. The Houston Cougars specialize in this fellow outlaw, blocking on one end, getting a little piece of it, staying after the action. Here he comes up with the steal. He ranks in the top ten in the conference in steal. Anthony Goldwire, the recipient of that, goes in with a nice fingertip roll. I tell you, Goldwire is all over the place. Here he is with a little steal. He's going to take off, get the great lead pass from Charles Outlaw, lay it up again, and some say that this is the best young point guard in the conference. And Will Flemons on the other end. Watch him literally take it away from Outlaw. He shows some versatility also. He has the big hands down inside. And here we go to the live action, and it is turned over by Houston. It'll come back to Texas Tech. Houston now has turned it over five times. Tech has got seven turnovers, but the Raiders out rebounding the Cougars 9 4. Clay mentioned earlier that's something that Houston's improved lately, but it's still an overall concern for Coach Pat Foster. That he thinks his ball club can do a better job on the boards both ends. Inside the steal by Drain. Goldwire. Someone got a touch on that, maybe Holly. And there's Outlaw, though, to pick it up and put it in. Houston goes right to a full court press as soon as they score on a free throw or a field goal. The other way won't go. The rebound comes off though to Austin, kicks to Hughes, wide open for the tray instead, takes it inside, and Lance gets it going. Much more active tonight, Lance Hughes. He had 26 in one of the meetings last year against the Cougars and makes it 2019. Tech down by one. He's short in picking up on the rebound, and it's taken by Holly. Hughes runs it down for the Red Raiders. They trail 2019. The shot clock hadn't been much of a factor tonight. Once or twice has been the only time you've even looked up there. Smith kicks to Hughes just inside the three line. To go back to the University of Houston with a substitution made. And checking in for Pat Foster's club, Lloyd Wiles. There he is, 6'1 sophomore from Houston, Westbury High School. 
Well, Wiles is the backup point guard behind Anthony Goldwater, but he committed that foolish foul earlier until Pat Foster got him out. Diaz a bit off balance, can't convert on the long one, but Outlaw to recover. Goldwire with a reverse. He drew the foul, and we'll go to the free throw line. Lemons picks up the personal foul, his first. Hey, attendance is up, not only here, but around the league. They're averaging nearly 4,000 a game here in Lubbock. This facility holds 8,174. They're averaging 39.97. And around the conference this year, it's up by 785 fans per game. Of course, the biggest increase has been in Waco, where the Baylor Bears under Daryl Johnson are averaging over 2,300 more fans than they were a year ago. The league is a improved one this year from top to bottom, and we've got a lot of excitement of it for you here on Prime Network. The free throws make it 22 to 19. Cougars leading it by three. Bill Landon, McCoy McLemore with you here in Lubbock. Bill, the Cougars remain in this half-court zone. Come up with another turnover, and again, that's their bread and butter. They want to run. Goldwire leads the attack, trying to find the open man to get the quickest shot possible. Cougars shooting for a seventh straight win here tonight. Guide into the Associated Press rankings this week, the first time not only this year, but for Houston since 1984. And the jumper is good from Wiles. The average is just under four a game. Lloyd Wiles, and it's a 24-19 contest. Houston trying to get a little pad here. Texas Tech doing a very good job of moving the basketball around. No quick shots, good patience. Looking for the high percentage shot. This half-court defense causing some problems, though. Shot clock at 21 for Tech, and the long pass. Smith brings it down. Austin kicks it off. 13 on the shot clock for Texas Tech. 7.30 to go in the half. They need a bucket here. Seven on the shot clock. Turnover. Goldwire picks up the loose one. And the whistle before the shot. Before the shot. Stops the break. Might have been a good foul for James Dickey's ball club. Well, it might have been a good pass also by Anthony Goldwire as he really threaded the ball between two guys. A timeout is called. The Red Raiders facing their biggest deficit of this contest. It's 24-19. Houston will be back on prime. Why are these coaches going crazy? Women's Hoop Fever. This year, the shots are on us. SMU in Texas A&M, live Wednesday night at 7 Central on HSE. Page 355. Medications that can rob you of your sex life. Page 141. The secret ingredient in Italian foods that can help lower cholesterol. Page 545. How to silence a snorer. This incredible book belongs in every home. The Doctor's Book of Home Remedies from the editors of Prevention Magazine Health Books. Over 670 pages of astonishing home remedies, all scientifically proven. Yours free for three full weeks. Page 341. Why you should never buy color toilet paper. Now the information you need to cure over 130 common health problems is always on hand. Act now and you'll also get this fabulous book, Meals That Heal, free. Page 497. Use oatmeal to end the itch of poison ivy. Page 570. Call now to get the Doctor's Book of Home Remedies free for three weeks. Keep it and we'll bill you in four easy installments of only $6.99. Call 1-800-423-2121. The Metro Jam session has gone to the birds when the Cardinals' reign of threes lands on the Hokies. Louisville and Virginia Tech, live Thursday at 6.30 Central on HSE. Well, after three ties and five lead changes, Houston trying to take control. Its biggest lead, the Cougars by five over the Red Raiders. Bill Land and McCoy McLemore with you on Prime Network. And here's a look at the standings. Houston with a victory over SMU taking over sole leadership. Rice, Baylor, and SMU one loss each. Houston and SMU meet again this weekend in Dallas. And there you see Texas Tech at 0-3. The Red Raiders trying to get back on track. They lost a home game here against SMU by two that they certainly wish they had a chance to play over again. This is a ball club overall that is 8-6 and six and will certainly get its share of Ws before it's all said and done. 
Wiles got his first shot, can't hit the tray. The rebound comes to Texas Tech and Will Flemons. Flemons averaging 10 boards a game, 12 in conference play. He's number four in the league with that 10 figure, along with his 18 point per game average. Well, that was a great uh, rebound by Will Fleming, but tell you what, Bill, that's the first time he's touched the basketball in the last five minutes. Foul called on Goldwire and Pat Houston, obviously not in agreement. I think he saw a call, maybe thought it should have had a five second call right before that. Well, Coach Brad Foster right in front of his bench. That assignment was to trap the first pass to cross. That's what the Cougars did, but got a little too much on. He is all over Bob Deibler right now. Lord, Lord Wiles all over Collins trying to carry out his coach's order. Smith, and it's a charge. And I only bring this up because Pat Foster was all over Bob Deibler. Who made that call? Bob Deibler and James Dickey at the other end says, okay, that's the payback, huh? Well, let's see if it was a block or a charge. What a move that time by Rafael Carrasco. Was it, he set? It appears that he was still moving that time. The official has a better angle, but you have to be set defensively to get the call. I don't know what they pay those guys, but it ain't enough. Here comes Collins. The reverse block by Outlaw. Oh, my goodness. This guy, ladies and gentlemen, if you got a chance to see him at a theater coming to you soon, you better check him out. Well, what's the reverse shot here by Collins trying to get away from Outlaw. Outlaw hangs above and just waits there like he camped. He was standing on a ladder and blocked the shot. Finally, the young man let it go. I think Collins had the right idea. He figured Outlaw's coming to the right side. I'll go to the left, and Outlaw in midair says, wait a minute. Outlaw was thinking, too, he's going to the left side. I'm going to wait for him. Incredible. The shot good by Corey Smith. He hits the three-pointer, and the freshman has pulled Tech back within a deuce now. Here's a trade the other way by Smith that won't go, and on the boards, it is Dale to bring it down for the Red Raiders. They could tie or take the lead if they go for the long one. Well, the Tech outside shooting has suddenly heated up on one end. The Houston outside shooting has gone cold. With the exception of that shot by Lloyd Wiles, nobody scored from the outside. Five and a half to go in the half. Collins, rebound for Roscoe, was able to maintain control. Kicks to Grayson, who's going to the game. Senior from Tupelo, Mississippi. Sees a little bit of playing time for Coach Pat Foster. But out there goes with seven or eight guys. Here's Grayson out front. Darrell, a senior, 6'1", 180. And he played in... 10 games usually makes something happen though when he comes in five minutes remaining in the half well what's happening now the tech defensive pressure has moved out about a foot outlaw not ready for it but it ends up coming back to smith and then a foul will be called on collins james dickey agonizes over that his ball club had one and let it go back Thursday night at 7.30, there's exciting Metro Conference basketball on Prime Network. Denny Crumb's Louisville Cardinals take on Virginia Tech. Don Russell and Terry Gannon will be there with a the commentary. You should make plans to be there, too. Check local listings for the time in your area. That's 7.30 Eastern. Louisville and Bot Tech. 16 fouls on the Raiders, five on the Cougars, as we're at the 440 mark here in this one. First half knocked away by Clemens inside. It goes back to the Cougs. Shot clock starts all over again on the foul call. 34 right now on the clock for the Cougars. Carrasco. And back out to Diaz. Outlaw. Try to sag and help. He goes against Clemens. Hangs and gets it to fall. So Outlaw with making it a 26-22 game. He's got a half dozen now. Bo Outlaw averages 17 a game, 10th in the league. Out of bounds, the turnover again by Tech. And a four-point deficit for the Raiders as Houston will get it back. Well, Bill, Tech at this point has three trips up the court, three possessions in a basketball where they did not score a free throw or a field goal from the outside, and that's one of the areas that Coach Jane Dickey's been concerned about. Wasted trips up the court. Houston Cougars applying the defensive pressure to cause the turnover. Tech is seventh in the league in turnover margin. Houston is fourth. Carrasco nearly walked. Fans thought he did. In 
in trouble. Nice defense by Hughes that time. Inside Outlaw, the double team. He felt it. Carrasco can't convert. Dale brings it down. Here's Collins. Hughes. 26-22, the visitors from Houston. The Cougars, 4-0 in the lead. Right, let's, let's take a look. This is the fourth trip up the court, ball possession-wise, by the Red Raiders. They didn't score the last three. Have to score this time to keep this game in a tight position. Dale, had seven in the early going. Can't drop this one. D.I.'s the goal wire. The juggling act, nothing called. Down low. Carrasco saved out of bounds. It goes back to Houston. James Dickey saying, wait a minute. Well, the official he was talking to had his back turned. We'll take a break. It is hot and heavy here. 26-22 Cougars will be back. You know, I enjoy performing, but I also enjoy working out. That's why I go to General Nutrition Centers and get Cybergenics Phase 1. You get a training tape and a manual, plus five state-of-the-art supplements. Hey, if this guy can do it, you can do it. Get Cybergenics at GNC. Set your sights. Adjust your speakers, because here comes NBA Superstars 2, basketball's top guns. Have joined forces with MCA's hottest recording artist. The mix includes Patti LaBelle, Michael Jordan, Guy, Charles Barkley, Sass Jordan, and many more. It's an arsenal of sights and sounds. With every purchase, you'll receive a free NBA Superstars 2 audio cassette sampler. Lock on to NBA Superstars 2 wherever NBA videos are sold. to reel off NBA action. A four-star basketball show with a jamming lineup. For the history buff, a stroll down memory lane. For the inquiring mind, the up close and personal. I'm a bad dog. And for you basketball aficionados, start counting the play. Oh, here's oh, yeah. All in NBA action. Tuesdays at 6.30 on HSE. This telecast is authorized under rights granted to Prime Network by the Southwest Conference and is not intended for the commercial use of our viewing audience. Any reproduction, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of Prime Network and the Southwest Conference is prohibited. Bill Land, McCoy McLemore with you here in Lubbock as the Red Raiders trail the Cougars. It's Houston 26-22, and the battle between Outlaw and Flemons, both teams have done well defensively. Flemons was just two, Outlaw was six. And the rebound battle, Tech has owned that. It's kept them close. They're within four. Diaz and can't hit the tray. Smith, last touch by Outlaw. It'll go to Texas Tech. Okay, to wait and see there as Pat Foster looks on. Full court pressure by the Cougars again with Outlaw on the point. Hasn't bothered Texas Tech in the last five minutes. They've been getting the basketball up pretty effectively. He scores in this one. Diaz and Goldwire for Houston, eight apiece. Hughes and Dale have combined for 15 for Texas Tech. Hughes leads him with eight. There's the steal by Drain, and this deflected. It comes back to Dale of Texas Tech. 2.34 to go in the half. Low scoring, yes, 26-22, but it has not been without a ton of action. That's a, it really hasn't. But remember, that's number five with an empty trip up the court by Tech, even though they get a shot off this time. Sasser got his own to Dale. Yeah. Tech came out of the break shooting just 43%. Houston had been hitting 50%, so. Number six, trip up the court again. Pat Foster's calmed down somewhat because he knows that to get out of this half, as tight as Tech has been playing, he's uh, gonna be very fortunate. Here's Hughes with the steal against Goldwire. Oh, Baba! In case you needed to know, he's the best jumper on the team. it away it'll go back to Houston but the Coliseum is jumping and loving well they 
jumping in love it. And Mr. Lance Hughes is jumping in love. He took a quick look to see if anybody was there. Double pump, a la Michael Jordan style, and a great move. Smith, he will quiet him. It's 28-24. Derek Smith, who averages 11 a game, gets his first bucket of the night. The steal, gold wire, swatted away literally, and he'll go to the free throw line when he gets up. Yeah. Says, take that stuff out of here. You're going to earn those two. Smith with the foul. And the Red Raiders have put the Cougars in the bonus situation. And Goldwire slow to get up. Sasser comes in for Smith. I want to remind you, Saturday night, there's Pac-10 action on Prime Network. Washington Huskies will take on Stanford. And you'll see it right here. The Cardinals' Marcus Lally is one of the league's top three-point shooters. He'll be bombing away on the Huskies. Washington and Stanford Saturday at 11. That's 11 Eastern time. Check your local listings for the time in your area. College basketball here on Prime Network. Seventh team foul on the Raiders. Cougars have got five, and Goldwire up and at him, and he's an... Excellent free throw shooter, 79%, fourth best in the league. Diaz is a notch or two better at 81, second in the conference, but Goldwire hits both of these, and he now has double figs with 10 for the night, and it is a 30 to 24 ball game as Houston has slowly moved to its biggest lead. Well, they give Goldwire a rest, and this is gonna hurt the Cougars a little bit, though with a minute 23 to go, they have to hold tight. Credit Smith with a big bucket. The crowd was roaring after that huge dunk. And a near steal. Holly. Got it back to Hughes, and now we'll control again. I want to remind you, we'll talk to Texas Tech women's coach, Marsha Sharp, at halftime. They've got a great basketball team here on the women's side, and they've been filling the building. Sold out for the night against Texas. And we'll talk to her about it. Drain. Following the loose one. And now to Grayson. Inside a minute, Houston up by a half dozen. Who? what a pass from Outlaw. And Diaz is on. He got fouled in the middle of the free throw line. And Houston starting to pound away inside a bit as Pat Foster sees his club up by six. David Diaz causes so many problems matchup wise at 6'7, six, 6'8. Six, he can play outside, but he goes to the hoop so very well. He's always in the right place. That time he followed up his own shot, creating a second shot opportunity. And this young man had six three point shots in the, in the last victory there at home against SMU. Yeah, he ended up with 24 against the Ponies. He's got nine tonight, and the Cougars add to their lead now seven with 36 seconds to go in the half. Hughes, Clemens, and a block, but a foul. It's, it is a goaltending. Yes, it's goaltending and a foul. The underneath official, Bob Dyber, called the foul, and the goaltending call came from the man outside, and that is the correct way to call that. And a chance for three-point play, McCoy. Well, here's Will Clemens. He has not had the basketball in the last 10 minutes. This time he goes inside. Derek Smith there for the block. A little different angle to see if he got arm and basket. His fingers were above the rim that time. That was the goaltending side, and he made the body contact. So possible three-point play uh, for the, the Red Raiders here. And if they go into a full-court press with 29 seconds, if he makes this free throw, then they could be right back in the game at 31-26. We see Flemons, the numbers from a year ago, when he was a player of the year in the league. He had 31 against Texas, a career high, but almost shut out in the final minutes of that game. Had just one point in the final, I think, eight or nine minutes. And the previous game against Rice, the same thing occurred. But tonight he's having trouble getting going early as he's got just five points, but it's a four-point game. You're looking at the game clock. Shot clock turned off. Goldwire, Smith, Hughes with a rebound, and you'll have to fling one. Aware of the clock. Thirty-one, thirty. He's got thirteen. Here's a look. 
Boy, he really gathered himself very well. Almost lost control twice. Measured it here. Flipped it with a nice touch. Got a nice height in it. And it drops down to beat that clock. A little different angle. See, he stays with it all the way. Instead of jumping, he continued to run and just shot it. And boy, what a touch. Well, James Dickey said, we got to get some help for Will Flemish. And Hughes has answered the call. And it's a one-point game at intermission. Houston 31, Tech 30. We're back to talk a little women's hoops in a moment. Move it. Cool it. Silver. Bullet. Rock it. Smooth it. Silver. the right beer now. Grab it while you can. Silver Bullet! Yeah, the right beer now. Drum roll, please. Here are the top ten reasons to watch Prime. Number ten, it's a really cheap date. Number nine, good digestive viewing fortified with vitamins and minerals. Number eight, every night is ladies' night. Number seven, good wholesome programming for the whole family to enjoy. Number six, male bonding, male bonding, male bonding. Number five, car cams, net cams, slam cams. Number four, sorry, we're out of time. Okay, number three, number two, and number one. Because everyone loves a winner. Tickets are available now for all Dallas Mavericks regular season home games. Don't miss the action as the Young Guns take on the best of the NBA. Stop by the Reunion Arena box office or any Metroplex Dillard's location for tickets or call Metro 939-2712. It's a crazy world. There's light this and light that. There's even light gasoline. That's right, light gas. Stuff that makes your engine knock and ping. 104 plus octane boost turns light gas into raw power. 104 plus knocks out knocks and pigs. Removes clogging engine deposits and increases horsepower up to 30%. It'll even help you beat that pesky freeway traffic. Turn your engine loose. Do some boost. Welcome back. It's halftime in Lubbock. Bill Land with you as Texas Tech in Houston, a wild one here, 31-30 Houston on top at intermission. Texas Tech has an outstanding women's basketball program as well here, and it's our pleasure to have at halftime the head coach of the Lady Raiders, Marcia Sharp, ball club ranked 14th in the country, 12-3, and, and we had a lot of excitement before the half. The other night, you guys had a sellout crowd here for your game, and things are hot and heavy for the women as well. I'll tell you what, that was a great basketball game. I think it was a great basketball game for women's basketball on the whole. And uh, obviously we were really pleased about the crowd and the excitement here. And we would like to have been, for it to have been a one-point Tech victory instead of a one-point Texas win. But I think still a great game for our conference. You know, women's basketball is growing in popularity. What is the big reason for it? Well, I think part of it has to do with media. I think uh, we've gotten a little bit more attention, a few more TV games, and I think the caliber of players that are playing the game now is a lot better than it was 10 years ago, maybe, and we just feel like that it's an awfully good product, and a lot more people are finding out about it, and uh, I think it's really exciting, and a lot of people are, are deciding that they want to be, be uh, women's basketball fans. Your own team, 12-3, and three, and always battling Texas and some others in the Southwest Conference, how do you appraise it? It is a, a great league, and we feel like there are a lot of teams in the Southwest Conference that are much improved. I think Texas has an awfully good basketball team, and uh, I expect them to, to do very well in postseason play. And, you know, I hope our league is strong enough that we can continue to get several teams in the NCAA tournament. And I think that uh, when that starts happening more and more, we'll, uh, we'll be recognized as one of the better leagues in women's basketball. No, I know Texas Tech, the men are certainly proud of Will Flemons. You've got your own star player that, man, can play with anybody. I think Cheryl Swoops is about as good as there is. Uh, we hope that she'll be considered as a, maybe a candidate for player of the year. She was a Kodak All-American last year in her first season here, and 
uh, you know, she's put up great numbers and, and really brought us to a different level, to be honest with you. Uh, maybe giving us a little bit more national recognition than we had before. Well, Marsha, thanks very much for your time. Congratulations on your success and the best of luck in the future. Thank you very much. Marsha Sharp, the head coach of the Lady Raiders at Texas Tech. They've got an outstanding team. We've got an outstanding game here at halftime, but I don't know if it can match the Bud Light Daredevils. We'll take a look at them here in Lubbock before we take a break for halftime. As a truck company for 90 years, we understand the value of a strong frame, a reassuring strength for towing, whether you're on road or off road. GMC Truck, the strength of experience. Many people assume that Texas Tech has strong programs and technology. We do. Our faculty are known worldwide for their work in lasers, disaster research, and computers. But Texas Tech is also the Health Sciences Center, improving medical care in West Texas. And Texas Tech is law, and business, and agriculture, and more than 150 other fields from the arts to zoology. At Texas Tech, our horizons are unlimited. I'm the athletic trainer for the NBA World Champion Chicago Bulls. And to help them stay champs, I make sure they drink Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Nothing replaces fluids, minerals, and energy better than Gatorade. Now, there may be other sports drinks out there, but I believe in Gatorade. Gatorade's the only one on the Bulls bench. Because when it comes to playing at the top of your game, nothing beats Gatorade. You ever done a commercial before? <laughs> Never. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> Thirty-one thirty, our halftime score. Houston leads Texas Tech by one in Southwest Conference action here on Prime Network. Welcome back, everyone. Bill Land with you. McCoy McLemore to join us before we look at the highlights. What an end of the half, and what a bunch of action we had in this one. There's a lot of talent on the floor tonight. Well, it really is. And the Texas Tech end, I tell you, they were a lot more aggressive, Bill. Offensively, they got some versatility. And defensively, they put a lot more pressure on the Cougars. Well, we mentioned earlier that James Dickey said he's got to have some help from some other people. It happened early on tonight. Other than Will Clemens, and we'll see some action as Brad Dale has been a guy who contributed. He got seven of their first 14. Well, they're finding the open man there. Will Clemens, the guy that's carried the load, but they got some versatility. Dale got him off to a good start. And, of course, Will Clemens is always the guy, but Lance Hughes has been a big key. Nice pass coming up here. Well, Lance Hughes presents that outside threat. That opens up the inside. Fleming had no problem getting that to the back. And we mentioned Goldwire and his abilities. You take a look inside with Outlaw King, the break 
fake, and then Goldwire knows what to do with it. Well, Houston wants to run, and this is the guy that leads the pack. Great pass to get him open. He does the rest with a little fingertip. Speaking of outlaw, he came in with 54 blocks to lead the league, and he's added to his total here tonight. Well, he's all over the place. You can't forget that he's there. He waits until you go up. Then he blocks it on the side, keeps the ball in play for the Cougars. And we'll take a look at another one coming up. And every time you watch this guy play, it's something different. Here's Collins coming in. Watch this. Well, look for the ladder underneath uh, because he had to have been standing on the ladder. Look how long he stays up in the air. That time with a great block with the left hand. And Hughes, right before the half, comes out to hit the three-pointer. As the buzzer sounds, we'll take a look at it, and that's made it a 31-30 game. Lance Hughes with the long bomb. Well, for the Red Raiders, this had to be the play of the night. This shows their aggressiveness. He never quit there, never looked at the clock, just let it go, and it drops down in the half. Hey, great camera work, guys. It's been an outstanding game. 31-30, our score at the half. We're back with a look at some stats after these messages. Why are these coaches going crazy? Women's Hoop Fever. This year, the shots are on us. Oklahoma and Colorado, live Friday night at 7 Central on HSE. Property owners, if you want to clear overgrown areas, you could struggle with a shaky sickle bar mower like this, or with a handheld brush cutter like this. Or instead, you could cut tall grass and weeds, brambles, sumac, even hardwood saplings up to one inch thick with the amazing DR Field and Brush Mower. The Field and Brush Mower chops most everything it cuts. There's no tangled brush to trip over or to pick up. And those big self-propelled wheels roll right through ditches, over bumps, and logs with ease. The DR is not for your lawn, but what a job it does with meadows, roadsides, fence lines, walking paths, and woodlots. You can clear and maintain them all with the DR, Every few weeks, once a season, whenever you want. A big color catalog is just $2. Call toll-free 1-800-423-2121. That's 1-800-423-2121 for your big color catalog all about the amazing DR field and brush mower. I'm Marcia Sharp from Texas Tech University. Let's celebrate 10 years of Southwest Conference women's athletics and a decade of sports on HSC. Happy anniversary. A decade of sports, 10 years of entertainment. HSE. Thirty-one thirty at intermission here in Lubbock, Texas. Houston with a 31-30 lead over Texas Tech. Welcome back, everyone. Bill Landa, McCoy McLemore with you on Prime Network. And here's tonight's Gatorade halftime statistics. Shooting percentages, the same. Free throws, basically the same position. And then you take a look at rebounds and turnovers. You can see why it's a close one. Well, it really is. Tech did a super job to rebounding-wise. Everything else, they uh, really control the basketball a lot better with 15 turnovers. 15 turnovers that you just eight for the Houston Cougars. And now let's take a look at the leading individual scores for these two ball clubs here this evening as Houston leads it by one at the half. Goldwire with 10. Notice the four steals. Diaz, nine and five rebounds. And Outlaw, a couple of blocks. And his presence always is known. Well, he's always around the basket. And on the opposite end, uh, Texas Tech Red Raiders count on that big guy, Will Flemings, down inside. But it was Hughes who led the way with 13 points, four rebounds. Dale, seven points, three rebounds. And you see that Fleming there way down with 5.3 rebounds. But he's in the middle. But Smith, five points into five turnovers, which hurt uh, Texas Tech at this point. They got the last six. It's a one-point game. We're back with the second half here on Prime Network. Stay with us. It is Houston 31, Texas Tech 30. We tested in laboratories. We tested on the asphalt, in the parks, and on the road. We tested when it's 102 and there is no shade. And we found that nothing replaces fluids and minerals and quenches a thirst better than Gatorade. It's been proven again and again. But just to keep us on our toes, we tested over and over again in the highest court in the land. Space, a new frontier in scientific research. The University of Houston is a leader in space education and research located minutes from NASA's Johnson Space Center 
As a space grant college and a center for the commercial development of space, the university works with NASA and industry on everything from the next generation of semiconductors to the space stations of tomorrow. The University of Houston, exploring the future of space. This college basketball game is being brought to you by Gatorade. Gatorade Thirst Quencher satisfies your thirst and puts back what you need. Gatorade, for that deep down body thirst. It's a crazy world. There's light this and light that. There's even light gasoline. That's right, light gas. Stuff that makes your engine knock and ping. 104 plus octane boost turns light gas into raw power. 104 plus knocks out knocks and pings, removes clogging engine deposits, and increases horsepower up to 30%. It'll even help you beat that pesky freeway traffic. Turn your engine loose. Do some boost. Oh, I really did it last night. Got drunk, acted stupid, went home with, with... Who is that? What am I, dumb? How could I do this? Uh, what about AIDS? Then Barry realized, hey, I'm just a cartoon. I don't even have to shower. Get high, get stupid, get AIDS. The Texas Tech Red Raiders with a six zip run are back in it as we get ready for the second half here on Prime Network. Welcome to Southwest Conference College Basketball. Bill Lanham, McCoy McLemore with you. 31-30, the Cougars leading the Red Raiders as we get set for the second half. And if you'd have told me that Outlaw would only get three shots in the first half for Houston and that Clemens would only get four, I'd have thought, well, wait a minute. But these two teams have certainly pointed their defenses around the key players. Well, they really have. The Cougars stayed in that zone defense the whole game, man-to-man -man by Texas Tech. Both teams working very hard. Inside, Smith lost control, got it back. Great effort by Smith, and it pays off as the big fella, Derek Smith, a 6'5 senior from Humboldt, Texas, finally gets it in, and that stops the six-zip run that ended the half for the Red Raiders. And more importantly, it's a three-point cushion now for Houston. Inside, Clemens, and Will makes it a 33-32 ball game. The other way, it is Outlaw. So the key players both get going in the second half. Outlaw's got eight, and Flemons with his bucket now with seven. Cougars go back to the full court pressure. They had a little success early in the game, but Texas Tech was able to get across. And Hughes trying to reach Sasser. They throw it away. It'll come back now to Houston. So James Dickey's club again struggling in the turnover category. Well, turnovers late in the game is what really has killed him. Well, that's number 16, and they had 15 at halftime. Outlaw shows his versatility, steps out a little bit farther than you usually see. He's in double figures with 10, and it's a 37-32 ball game. Diaz nearly had it on the press. Collins loops to Sasser, takes it all the way to the hole, and scores. Jesse Drain gets beat on the wing. He thought he had some help down inside, but instead he had a wide open lane to go to the basket. It would seem, McCoy, that Tech, that's an area that they might have a chance to exploit Houston. They're gonna have to make them pay for that press a bit more. They did early in the game. Smith with a miss inside, and we've got a foul against the University of Houston. Texas Tech looking for angles, trying to find an avenue to the basket, have not been able to get the ball to Will Fleming, so instead they go to Sass Sasson on the side. He goes right by Smith. Smith stopped and took a look, thought he had some help, but nobody's there. Wide open lane to the basket. The foul was called on Outlaw, and that's his first, the first of the second half. Collins to Hughes, he slipped by Goldwire. It's four on two, Dale. And Houston's gotta feel fortunate they hustled back and. Instead, Hughes for the three. Well, they don't feel so fortunate, do they? It's a tie game. And Lance Hughes has got 16 now. Hughes, two above his average. He's been averaging just 12 in the league, and he's back on track. Goldwire makes it a 39-37 ball game after we just had our fourth tie of the night. Collins to Hughes, nearly lost it. And now to Dale, three on two. 
to the corner for Sasser. Hesitated just a second on that one. Loose one out of bounds. Last touch by Dale. It'll go to Houston. Houston doing a better job on the defensive boards, especially keeping it alive. That time, Outlaw was not able to get the rebound, but he kept it up there. Houston gets a break, and Goldwire decides to walk it up. Cougars by a pair. 17-08 remaining in the ball game. Inside to Carrasco, and now to Drain. Down low, knocked away by Flemons, and then stolen by Sasser. Here comes Collins to Hughes. Blocked by Carrasco. Diaz for three, and when he gets a chance to spot up, he is dangerous. Fifth best in the league at 38%. Diaz has got a dozen now. Well, he got a super pass by Charles Outlaw, who brought the ball up to court, patiently found the open man. Sasser kicks Flemons' scores, 42-39 nine for Flemons and Goldwire quickly into Outlaw. Oh my goodness, what a great pass. You talk about putting it in the right spot. Goldwire did that. And Hughes back out to Collins. Outlaws hit six of six from the floor for his 12 points. Dale with the miss, kept alive by Hughes, but it comes off to drain for the Cougars. They lead by five. Their biggest lead was six at 30 to 24. And then six straight by Tech put them at one at intermission. Drain misses the jumper. Collins gets it after Flemons on the carom. Wiles will check in on the horn for the Houston Cougars. Hughes cranks the three. Flemons battles for it. Loose one comes off to Collins. Boy, great effort both ways. Hughes on the baseline, and the double team stops him. Drain, Carrasco misses the tip. They had a three on one and couldn't convert. Here comes Collins, three on three. See if they wait for Flemons and crew. Well, the running game seems to be hurting the Cougars right now. Jesse Drain, I think, is flat out of gas. Had that basketball underneath. And uh, you look at the Houston Cougars, and boy, I tell you, this pace seems to be favoring the Texas Tech Red Raiders. The Cougars are a team that averages 83 a game. They're on pace to have their highest scoring average since 77-78 season when they averaged 91 a game. They're second in the league in scoring behind Baylor. Tech comes in at 75 a game, sixth in the conference. The steal as Collins, rather Hughes, lost it to Drain, and here's Goldwater. Boy shake and bake and he puts it in and it's the largest lead for Houston and a timeout is called with it 46 39 we'll take a break as outlaw and Goldwire are combining to lead Houston to a seven point lead but I also enjoy working out. That's why I go to General Nutrition Centers and get Cybergenics Phase 1. With Phase 1, you get a training tape and manual plus five state-of-the-art supplements. Hey, if this guy can do it, you can do it. Get Cybergenics at GNC, the authority in sports nutrition products. Another day in the trenches got you down, been kicked around, so now you're all strung out. Maybe caught in a jam and have a bad attitude. This is got to be some sort of bad dream! Don't have a stroke. We can save you. Just get off your feet and get away from it all. Take a break. Relax. Refuel. Watch Prime and get relief from the everyday grind. Start your day talking sports with Norm Hitzkiss on Talk Radio 570 KLIN. Wrap up the day talking sports with Skip Bayless on Talk Radio 570 KLIN. Talk sports with Hitzkiss and Bayless and the biggest names in sports. Hitzkiss, 6 a.m., Bayless, 6 p.m. If you're going to talk sports, talk to these guys on Talk Radio 570 KLIF. Cougars lead at 46-39 with 14-28 remaining in the ball game and have been on 
a 15-9 run to start the second half and taking control here, McCoy. The uh, Raiders are going to have to answer the bell here. We had a game kind of like this in Austin the other day, but Texas got the big run at the end. You think the Raiders can come back? Well, they're going to have to, and basketball's a game of spurts and runs, and he who wins the last race wins the game. Year foul, Hughes held on, though. Sasser underneath, knocked away by Goldwire. Good job by Goldwire to get underneath. Houston Cougars with some super defense. Of course, James Dickey didn't think so, as uh, he thought there was a foul on the other end. Loose one comes off to Sasser after Dale's miss, and the tie-up, an alternating possession, will come back to Texas Tech. 46-39, Houston 11-2 overall. Their only losses to UCLA at Pauley Pavilion in L.A. and to North Carolina down in the Dean Dome. And nothing to cry about there for Pat Foster. I told him today, I said, hey, congratulations about being ranked. And he said, well, we can't afford to lose because this league doesn't get the respect it deserves. You see today, Tech with the 17 turnovers, and it's been costly for the Red Raiders. Houston with the constant pressure in the 1-3-1 zone defense. This foul is going to be Bill on Lord Wiles as he had a reaching foul. Lance Hughes trying to go by. Him. So Wiles picks up his second personal foul. The Cougars with just two fouls and Texas Tech no fouls this half and we played six minutes. Clemens with a tip. So Tech got five opportunities that time able to put it in by the big guy Will Clemens. And Houston turns it over. So about the time you think Pat Foster's club is starting to take control. Tech dominated inside got the bucket here. Well, Will Fleming shows you why he was the player of the year last year inside his conference. He's been pretty quiet field goal wise, but he hustled and got his own shot that time. Clemens beats the press down to Sasser, 46-41. Hughes. Inside and another foul call, this one on Diaz. So David Diaz, the senior from Caracas, Venezuela. Boy, what an improvement. Average six a game a year ago, and he's tripled that this year. Picks well, up his second foul. He plays the one position in the 1-3-1 defense, and it's his responsibility to pick up the postman when they get by oddball, but got a little too much arm. Allen Austin in the lineup now for Tech. Here's Holly. Hughes. 13-19 remaining. Hughes, the penetration, got it inside to Sasser. He backs off. Got to be the awareness of outlaw there. Clemens. He won't back off. Outlaw got a piece of it, but also with the body. And Bo Outlaw picks up the personal foul. Well, coming into the night, tonight's game, we talked about the classic matchup with the two postmen down inside. Will Flemings that time got an excellent post move inside. Charles Outlaw, known for his shot blocking, got too much arm. So he picks up a foul, but Outlaw's been tough. Billy's gone six for six for 12 points. And uh, you know, he came into this game shooting 62% from the field, but a good matchup with this big guy. Here's Flemons as he can't hit here. Tech is now three of five from the free throw line on the year. They shoot 63 and a half percent, sixth in the league. Houston 69 percent, second in the league overall. The conference is not doing as well as folks would like from the free throw line. Just one team shooting at 70 percent. And Tech missing. Opportunity there to cut the lead. Carrasco with the jump hook. The toss won't go. He battles for his own, and there's Outlaw. He got fouled, and he'll go to the line. And holding his eye, he got poked in the eye, and Bo Outlaw coming right over and sitting down. Well, he called his own timeout there, and he got smacked across the face. A lot of traffic down inside. Rafael Carrasco kept the ball alive. Outlaw goes in, a lot of hands popping around, so he's right back up. And remember, the officials are very concerned. New rule that if he shows any bleeding here, he has to go to the side. A little discussion on the side. I'm not sure whether he's bleeding or not. Well, and once the trainer is actually called on, I think he could have come over and sat down, but it's like everybody gets away from him because if you pay too much attention to him, you have to take him out of the game. And we'll take a look and see if we can see exactly where he got hit. 
Well, there he's faking, trying to get everybody off their feet, and it looks like Sasser comes across from the right side, got basketball and part of the nose. So he earned these two free throws. He stays on and at the free throw line. Outlaw, 61%. It's the only part of his game that isn't ranked among the league leaders. He's 10th in scoring, 2nd in rebounding, number 1 in field goal shooting, number 1 in block shots, number 3 in steals, and number 6 in assists. Charles Outlaw. Gets one out of two, and Houston is now six of eight from the free throw line. And the Cougars put on the pressure. Holly dribbles right through it, and was it a foul? For a minute, we thought maybe over and back or a, a double dribble, but no, it's going to be a foul on Houston, and the Cougars starting to add them up now as that's their fifth. And for Goldwire, it's his third. Again, just one on Texas Tech. 12.45 remaining. It's 47-41, Houston. They dare Smith, and that's the wrong guy to dare. He can't hit that one. He comes off to Outlaw. Diaz, double pump, and double dribble is the call, and there was Lance Hughes applying the defensive pressure. So they found out where Diaz has been setting up. Diaz is going to leave the lineup replaced by Smith, who comes in, add a little bit more pressure on the point. Also see if he can find the hot shooting hand. Clemens dishes, and Austin gets the bucket. Allen averages just two points a game, a junior, 6'5", 200. Excellent ball control by the Texas Tech Red Raiders moving the basketball around. No dribble, quick passes. And the Red Raider crowd starts to get into it here at the Lubbock Municipal Coliseum. Texas Tech has gone to a 2-1-2 -two -two zone defense, come out of the man-to-man. -man. Wiles can't crack the three. Rebound to Holly, and here come the Raiders. Austin, back to Holly. Houston in there, 1-3-1, one, one, and move Charles Outlaw to a wing. Carrasco down inside. Nice movement. Smith the three. No. Hughes kept it alive, and it comes off to go wire the Cougars. Seven forty-three in the lane. Goldwire kicks to Smith on the move. He couldn't convert. Hughes gives up to Holly and Austin. It will count. He's fouled. Forty-seven forty-five as Austin gets back-to-back -back buckets for Dickey's club. Quick pass up the sideline. Austin finds the back door, goes inside, draws the contact from Carrasco, showed some power as he held his position. So he has the three-point play opportunity after scoring the field goal from the outside. And you look at Drain, checks in, foul. Called against Carrasco, his first. The Cougars' seventh, one more in its bonus time. Here is Allen Austin at the free throw line. He's three of six this year, four of seven from the line and the Red Raiders are back in the hunt down by one now with a timeout called at 10 58 to go stay with us here on Prime it's 47 46 Cougars excuse me do you know what stock options are I wish I did the information you know you should know is in the Wall Street Journal's video guide to money and markets this exclusive 30-minute video is free when you call for 13 weeks of the journal for just $37, that's over 20% off the newsstand price. Call toll-free 800-522-5333 for 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal and your free video on money and markets. That's 800-522-5333. Why did you buy a Ford truck? Well, everything's big in Texas. I needed the biggest V8 diesel available and the biggest cargo bed for my work. Only Ford had both. I guess that's a couple of big reasons why Ford can say they've been number one for over 15 years. Why did you buy a Ford truck? 
Comfort. Fact is, more Texans are buying trucks than ever before. And Ford has the most luxurious interior. And since it's longer and has a wider wheelbase than Chevy, it rides smoother, too. Dream Team. It's Dream Team. Go metal players like Robinson, Jordan, Yo, and Drexler, Malone, Stockton, Pippen, and Barkley. The Houston Rockets. Wait to use the Dream Team Plus. Ten games starting at a hundred bucks. Wow, yo, what a deal. What a deal. Plus rookie sensation Shaquille O'Neal. And all the rest. Call 627-0600 to order the Dream Team Plus. It's the tent game package you've been dreaming of. Houston hanging on to a 47-46 lead here in the Southwest Conference game tonight. 10:58 remaining on Prime Network's SWC coverage. And let's take a look at how Tech's gotten back in it. Well, the basketball dictionary says the quickest way to get the ball up the court is a pass, and the highest percentage shot is the close layup inside. And look at a different angle. There's the quick pass. There's the high percentage shot, either a slam dunk or a layup. Texas Tech showing a clinic this time. And Austin with four points tonight is season high six. The steals starting to even out now a little bit. And there's the offensive boards that have become a factor for Tech and staying right here with 25th rank Houston. Inside and there's a turnover a little bit too hard to Smith. And Austin there to recover again for the Red Raiders. They could take the lead. Game was tied at 37. Bill, we saw the Houston offense without Bo Outlaw in the middle. Now we see the Houston defense without Outlaw in the middle. And Lance Hughes takes advantage of it. He does. Hughes makes it a 49-47 game, a block at the other end, and it brings a quick halt to the action, but Hughes quickly put Tech on top. Well, Lance Hughes really has awakened from his outside shooting slump. Has no hesitation on three-point shot. That's number three for him tonight from the long range. And the coaching staff had been concerned about him shooting from the outside, but he found the range tonight. And the free throw good as Houston. Makes it a 49-48 ball game. And Derek Smith with five points back at the line. He is a 71% free thrower. Carrasco kept it alive. Save, no. Comes off to Flemings. It's a live ball. 8 point run stopped on that free throw by Smith as the Raiders come back with it and another foul call. And this could be a factor as we come down the stretch here. The Cougars committing another foul this one on Drain and Houston putting Tech in the bonus. We've got 1002 to go McCoy and the Red Raiders have only committed two fouls so they've got a chance if they can start hitting at the free throw line and that is a big if they've got a chance to really make some hay against Houston. So we're, looking at, we're looking at two coaching strategies here. Coach Pat Foster having to rest Charles, Charles Outlaw during this stretch. Texas Tech and the coaching staff on their end trying to take the basketball to the hoop to fill up the gap inside. And both strategies are paying off. Coy Smith, a 64% free thrower, makes it a 51-48 game. Goal wire blocked by Flemings, tipped back to Carrasco, and he's fouled and scores. Back and forth we go, and Rafael Carrasco has been a factor tonight. He only averages three points and three boards a game, but he has been active. Well, Texas Tech had a full-court press for the first time, and that goal wire goes down, trying to get a shot. He stays in there with a second effort, gets it to Rafael Carrasco, who's in the right place at the right time, uses the big body, three-point play for the big guy. He's got five, and we're tied at 51. Fifth time we've been tied tonight. Tech's lead a brief one. Holly to Hughes and now to Austin. 9.39 remaining and Holly, he hits the three. And the Red Raiders, who are coming into this at 23% from three-point range in league games only, are coming back via the bomb. Smith got fouled on the follow. Cal's Jason Kidd is college basketball's most heralded freshman. You can see him in action Thursday night as the Golden Bears host Washington. 
the Huskies, Rich Manning is second in the Pac-10 in rebounding and ranks among the top 10 in scoring. It's Cal and Washington Thursday night at 11.30 Eastern on Prime Network. Back at the line, you see Outlaw lining up on the paint. And teammate Derek Smith with the free throw. 54-52, Tech. Smith, last year against Tech, 11 points, four boards in one meeting, four and four in the other. Houston has won the last seven in this series, an overtime thriller here a year ago in Lubbock. So Tech realizes that they can play with this team. There's certainly not any fear factor there. And Houston's aware of the craziness that can happen here at the Municipal Coliseum in Lubbock. Well, Holly has done a good job for the Red Raiders getting the basketball up under control. He's trying to find the open man. Cougars have been in that 1-3-1 one, one half court zone. Austin, the follow is good by Flemons. And Will Flemons makes it a three point lead again. He's got 13. Texas Tech, 56-53, 8.36 remaining. James Dickey, the only one calm in the house right now for the Red Raiders. Well, team rebounding means everybody crashes the boards. Red Raiders try to get a shot off here. Here's the shot attempt. Will Flemons in the right place to get the tip in, and that's team rebounding. Smith for three. You betcha. Coy Smith has got 10. It's the biggest lead of the night for the Raiders. A half dozen. Timeout. Stay with us on Prime. Hi, I'm James Dickey of Texas Tech University. Let's celebrate 10 years of great sports and a decade of entertainment right here on HSE. A decade of sports, 10 years of entertainment. HSE. Gardeners, if you want the satisfaction and variety of growing your own flower and vegetable transplants, but you're tired of messing with ordinary seed starting trays and pots, introducing the amazing APS Accelerated Propagation System. It's the all-in-one self-watering mini greenhouse that guarantees success. The revolutionary APS comes with everything you need for growing healthy transplants. The patented self-watering system provides just the right amount of moisture, while the greenhouse top keeps your seedlings warm and moist. Yes, the APS practically guarantees gardening success. The APS seed starting system is just $12.95, including soil mix, easy instructions, and a pack of tomato seeds absolutely free. Order now. Call toll-free 1-800-423-2121. That's 1-800-423-2121 to get your revolutionary APS seed starting system. Hi, I'm Jerry Trippiano. Join me and Susanna Showers for the Southwest Conference today. We'll have all the news and highlights from around the conference right here on the Southwest Conference today. SWC Today, Fridays at 6.30 Central on HSE. Fifty nine fifty three Texas Tech leading Houston after trailing by six here in the second half and the Red Raiders have come roaring back McCoy. Well they really have they look for the outside shooting. They have been shooting very poorly from the outside but freshman Coy Smith finds the range look pretty comfortable there and that's one of the reasons that Texas Tech is ahead of right now. Yeah they've got players folks. Lemons last year the league player of the year. Sasser Smith and Holly all outstanding high school players who were the player of the year in their respective divisions in state and then Lance Hughes who was the newcomer of the year in the Southwest Conference when he averaged 10 points a game in his freshman season and they're all contributing tonight. Tech has now hit 7 of 14 from three-point range for 50%, and Houston just 3 of 11. So the Raiders coming back via the bomb, and maybe the one that keyed it was Hughes' desperation attempt, if you will, right before intermission. 59-53 inside. Nice pass by Carrasco and Derek Smith with an exclamation point. Texas Tech gets burned that time because they really applied the pressure outside on Goldwire, but they forgot the big guy down inside. 
Nice slam by Smith. Austin gives to Hughes. Four-point tech lead. Holly, they flew right by him, and then Carrasco recovered to block it. Playing a good four game tonight. Goal line. 7.28 remaining. 59-55, Texas Tech. And that one, was it good? I think it was a little wide right. <laughs> Usually when you go to a hockey game, they tell you, keep your eye on the puck if you're in the stands. You never know. Tonight, if you weren't ready for that one, a tattoo on the forehead. Goes back to the University of Houston as Carrasco gets a breather and a pat on the back. It's Goldwire, Diaz, Drain, Outlaw, and Smith. And Tech, you see, doubling up in the last 5.20 to lead it by four. That last substitution was designed to get a little better ball handling inside and also have the offensive threat from the outside. Try to get the open shot. Nobody's hit it, but Diaz finally finds the range after missing the last two. And Diaz has now got 15 to make it 59-58. Hughes back out to Holly. Inside Flemons, what hands? He couldn't finish though. The tip won't go. Austin, I believe it was, that kept it alive. Here comes Goldwire traffic. Smith. And the Cougars have regained the lead. So just like that, they were down six. They've scored seven unanswered and lead it by one with 622 to go. Wow, what leadership by Goldwire as he really got the basketball down to the right spot. And another point blank miss for the Red Raiders. I believe that was Smith. And here comes Houston again. Goldwire a little bit out of control. Last touch by the Cougars, then it'll go back to Texas Tech. And Pat Foster didn't see it that way. Tell you what, that's an important turnover though or for James Dickey's club because they've missed two makeable shots and Houston comes back the other way to get the lead. Well, we talked earlier about the mistake by this young Texas Tech team. The last two trips up the court, they don't score, but they get a big break with the turnover by Goldwater and get the ball back and he's open inside. Oh my goodness. Clemens didn't have anybody within five feet of him and he's right underneath the basket. So a blown assignment by one of the Cougars, certainly. And it's back to a Tech lead of 161-60. Five and a half to go. This is where Tech has struggled in their four game losing streak. We get down to the final five, they have fallen apart. Goldwire's miss, the follow is good as Drain gets the bucket. Jesse, a sophomore out of Saginaw, Michigan, averages 10 and Drain Makes it a 62-61 lead, and Tech turns it over and wants a timeout. Woo. Stay with us. We've still got 514 remaining. 62-61. It's the visitors from Houston on top. Do you want it? Do you really want it? If you want it, get Ico Pro Thermic Force, the six-week complete integrated conditioning program to help maximize your body's potential and enhance muscle definition. It's more than just pills and powders. Ico Pro really works. Yeah, check this out. That was me before Ico Pro. This is me now. You you've gotta, gotta want it. Ico Pro Thermic Force. You've gotta want it at fine health stores and general nutrition centers. What time is it? Time to reel off NBA action. A four-star basketball show with a jamming lineup. For the history buff, a stroll down memory lane. For the inquiring mind, the up close and personal. I'm a bad dog. And for you basketball aficionados, start counting the play. Oh, here's Gordon. Oh, oh, yeah. All in NBA action. Every week on Prime. We tested in laboratories. We tested on the asphalt, in the parks, and on the road. We tested when it's 102 and there is no shade. And we found that nothing replaces fluids and minerals and quenches a thirst better than Gatorade. It's been proven again and again. But just to keep us on our toes, we tested over and over again in the highest court in the land. changes Houston on top 62 61 and they've been doing it with defense 
and inside tech unable to finish and that's been a concern by the coaching staff they've not been able to score when they had to late in the game houston on the other end goes down with the must basket and gets it done go wire again the spark plug and Houston up by one with the basketball. You see the bench scoring for Tech, and that has been a factor in their victories in league play. They have bench has not been as big a contributor as it was in non-conference action. Smith gets the jumper from the free throw line, and it's a three-point Houston lead now. Derek Smith's got 13. That's a couple above his average. Smith, one of four in double figures for Houston. All five starters average double figures for the Cougars. James Dickey has seen his club really struggle in the final five minutes. The other day against the University of Texas, it was 76-71 with 3.05 to go. They had a basket interference call go against them to give Texas a three-point shot, and they end up losing by 18. And that has been somewhat typical in their losses. Hughes to Flemons. And can't convert. So there's three in a row. Three trips up the court. No basket, no score. Goldwire gives to Outlaw. Nice movement. Diaz steps in for the deuce. Holly got maybe a hand on it and then recovers with a rebound. And one of the things James Dickey was saying is his club, maybe sometimes they expect too much from some of their freshmen. In conference play, he said, you have to make the adjustment in intensity. The things step up a notch. And that's where it really gets to the nitty gritty at this stage of the game. Let's see how they react tonight. Well, he's a, he's right. This is a young team that he's put together. He has to go with the newcomers because Will Fleming being the only senior that he has, Lance Hughes, with a big night finally, he was counted on. Houston, on the other hand, Bill is a veteran team. The, the starters play most of the minutes. The starters get uh, all of the shots late in the game. And if you, you look on the court right now, he has his starting five back out there. That's the guys who carried the load for him. Yeah, you saw Carrasco coming out as drained back in, and Dickey takes a seat while Lance Hughes, who's got 19, goes to the free throw line. And Hughes makes it number 20. 62% free throw, but free, free thrower, I should say, but he struggled in the league. He's only at 50%. Had a great game tonight. Outlaw with a rebound. Point that Houston run the floor. Blocking foul called against Texas Tech. As Smith couldn't quite put it down. And that is the fourth foul on Fleming. So while Tech is not in foul trouble overall, the big man is. Anthony Goldwar continues to thread the needle. Look at the super fast between two defenders causing uh, Smith to get an opportunity to go in with a little athletic ability. But Gowar, I think, has been the difference tonight. He's been the steady point guard right from the beginning. Drain takes a seat as Carrasco is back in, and at the line is Smith. Clemens, his fourth foul. That's just the fifth Raider foul, though, with 3.48 to go. So they can still afford to play aggressive basketball here. That was a shooting foul, and that's why... He goes to the line. Hey, don't forget next week, battle in Houston between the Rice Isles and the Houston Cougars. We'll have it for you here on Prime. That's Tuesday, 8.30 Eastern time, coming from Hoffines Pavilion as Rice, a team that is battling for the league lead along with the Cougars. The Cougars own the top spot at 4-0 coming in here tonight. Rice at 4-1, and then Baylor and SMU at 3-1 behind it. Carrasco kept it alive, and then Outlaw tapped it out to Smith, but a foul on Outlaw. Outlaw was on the back of a Red Raider player. That's that characteristic smile that Outlaw gives you. He's a force inside, but he loves this game. Third personal foul. The Cougars almost got away with it. They got the second opportunity. Two tips by first Carrasco and then Outlaw. They <laughs> walked the length of the court with a foul. And you saw James Dickey as he took time out from his conversation with the official to give Outlaw a slap as Outlaw was kind of smiling. <laughs> Because beneath that smile, man, it's like the uh, grin from a killer because he will come right back to nail you. 65-62. And Smith hits the free throw. That's Boy. Smith. Smith makes the first free throw. You see back at half court, if we can get a shot, Will Fleming is waiting at half court. Generally, that means if you make the second free throw, they go into a full court press because the guards are on the line. That gets in a position to go. There's a shot. Look at Will Fleming. He makes it. Let's see if there's a full court press. 
Smith hits them both. He's a couple above his average of 10 with 12 tonight, and it's 65-64, and the Raiders stay tight now after missing some golden opportunities. Carrasco comes back out as the... There's the press. Substitution made for Dream. And foul called. Nothing hurt there. That's the 16 foul on the Red Raiders. And James Dickey well aware saying, hey, gang, that's all right. Stay right here. Keep the pressure on. Yep. The next one will put Houston at the free throw line. Well, the Red Raiders have not full court, had to had the full court press all night. They've gone to it on selected times. That was a good time. They caught Houston napping that time and almost got away with a steal. He knew he had one to waste there. 3.38 to go, the double team on, and Smith brings it across. 65-64 Cougars, 3.28 to go. It's been a back and forth battle tonight here in Lubbock. Drain right there, Goldwire takes it all the way to the hole and makes it 67-64. What a job, what a job. He always comes up with the big basket or the big pass. He's got his average of 16, his best 22 against North Carolina this year. He had a season high 12 assist against SMU in the last outing. Hughes gets his own miss. They finally backed away and he spins it in. Gold wire. End to end whistle before the shot and a foul. He'll go to the free throw line as Sasser got him. Well, there is no rest and no chance to celebrate a basket when you go against this guy. Anthony Goldwater, junior college transfer. Houston lost a good point guard in Derrick Daniels last season. This young fella picked up out of the junior college ranks, first team All-American, stepped right into the starting lineup and has done a super job for the Cougars. And boy, has he been a spark plug tonight. Well, particularly consider that Tyrone Evans out early in the December part of the schedule. Goldwire's had to step up his minutes and it hasn't hurt his play. The miss there goes out of bounds back to Houston. And the Red Raider fans and their boss don't believe it. Goldwire, a 79% free throw, a rare miss. Second chance, though. Outlaw. Rebound, Clemens. Well, if you're a Red Raider fan, you figure you better get one here because Tech has squandered some great opportunities. You have to score at this point every time the Cougars score. You have to trade baskets. You can't let them get too far away, nor can you make many mistakes at this point. Holly with it out front. Key possession with 25 on the shot clock. 2.18 to go in the game. And the Raiders down by one. A foul called against Houston. Hughes will go to the line, and it's on Outlaw. That's his fourth. So the studs here tonight, Outlaw and Clemens with four apiece and 2.14 to play. And the Cougars now, 10th team foul, so it's two shot at the line opportunity for Texas Tech. And Carrasco and Drain continue to substitute for one another with Drain back in. Hughes will go to the line for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Remember Will, Frem Will Fleming's at this point at half court waiting for the, the made shot. The guards are underneath. Again, that's usually the position when you go to full court press. But Lance Hughes has to make the second free throw in order to have them in position to uh, make the full court press. Foul situation, there you see the big guy on each team with four. Goldwire and Diaz three apiece, and the same for Tex Smith and Holly. Hughes hits this one to tie it at 67. So after eight lead changes, this is the sixth time the game has been tied, and a whistle brings a halt to the play as Goldwire puts so much pressure on the defense. It'll be a one-on-one. -on -one. Foul on Lenny Holland. Carrasco comes back in, and Goldwire goes to the line for the Cougs. Houston is now 12 of 17 from the free throw line. On the other hand, Tech has hit 9 of 14. And Goldwire with 17 points. Kept alive, Goldwire saved it. I think he thought it was gonna be double dribble, that's why he was afraid to pick it up again. Maybe the officials missed one there. But great effort by Goldwire. Hughes knocked it away but couldn't recover. 154 to go, and Houston nearly 
shoot away, but Smith can't convert. Sasser had to use. Oh, mama. Hold on. It's 68-67. The Cougars lead it. Tech down by one with the ball. Sasser there. Smith. Rebound Clemens. Holly for three. Tech leads by a deuce. 70-68. They're all on their feet here at the Coliseum in Lubbock. Goldwire with a sensational scoop. And we're tied at 70. What a ball game. 113 to go. Well, they went overtime a year ago, McCoy. That would work in Tech's favor at this point with the big guy in foul trouble down inside. Hughes got fouled. He'll shoot two regardless because of the 10 foul plus against the Cougars. Lance Hughes will go to the free throw line. Man, as Holly hit some shots tonight. Well, this is an opportunity shot. When you're wide open, you have to have it, and they knock it down. Anthony Gowar comes right back. No opportunity here. He creates his own opportunity, goes to three guys there, creates the scoop inside, and boy, it didn't take him long to get up the court. Carrasco back out, drain in, and Tech makes a substitution as Austin checks back in for the Red Raiders. Holly tonight has hit two of three from three-point range as Hughes hits this one to break the tie. Holly came in here tonight seven of 38 and threes for 18%, so you never know who will come to the front. Hughes, cans them both. 72-70 Red Raiders, and Hughes has put them up by a pair. He's got 25. Goal wire. And the rebound to Clemens. They'll get a loose one. Hughes. <laughs> 40 seconds remain. Goal wire. His own. Another trade. Clemens the rebound. Taken away by Outlaw. And a timeout, Houston. Oh, my goodness. Flemons had the rebound. The Raiders up by four and 27 seconds to go. Outlaw with the steal, the basket, timeout, two-point game. James Dickey cannot believe that nothing was called on that exchange. Lance Hughes about blew the roof off the bubble on this dunk. Well, he got a great lead pass out there on the run. Nobody there. Double pump again. Got it through. Wanted the cheering from the crowd. And Goldwar comes right back. Misses the three-point shot. It was a scramble inside. Outlaw stays after it. Finally gets it and slams it down through and quickly calls timeout. A little different angle. You see Flemons there with the basketball. Loses it on the way down. Charles Outlaw, the ever-presence big guy inside, Finally gets it to fall. Incredible. And some folks were talking before the ball game, and Pat Foster mentioned that Houston finally in the rankings. First time Southwest Conference had a team ranked since late 91, and then it was Arkansas and Texas. Houston's first time in the ratings since 1984. And he said, we lose tonight, Bill. It's all right down the drain. Even though they've won six in a row, this league not getting the respect that I think it deserves around the country. And their ranking is in danger right now, 74-72, but Outlaw gives them a chance because if that last exchange doesn't occur and Flemons hangs on, they're going to go to the line, a chance to lock it up. Houston trying to stay unbeaten in the league. They've won three of those first four at home. This is their second road game, and Tech looking to break through in the win column. Here in the Southwest Conference, they're one and two as far as the, the only home game was SMU that they lost. Timeout. Smith called a timeout. And that is the last one for Texas Tech with 22 seconds to go. Hang with us, 74 72 Tech. As a truck company for 90 years, we understand the value of a strong frame, a reassuring strength for towing, whether you're on road or GMC Truck, the strength of experience.
There's our situation. Texas Tech leading by two, out of timeouts with the basketball, 85 feet plus to go, and Houston trying to come back and get one here. Clemens, triple team. Holly, and Holly might have made a mistake, McCoy, because the key at the end of the game is not who can get to the free throw line, it's to play keep away when you've got the lead. They had a two on one, but I think rather than risk the pass, he said, I'll just take the foul. Well, he ends up with the basketball, so you got to figure it was a good decision. He didn't want to throw it away. They also were fighting the 10 second count at that point. Houston trying a strategy with Rafael Carrasco coming out of the ball game. Derek Smith back in. He's a little quicker. There's 17 seconds on that shot clock. Tech up by two. So, Holly, I beg your pardon, McCoy. He's had a couple of threes that have been critical. He's 64% shooter from the free throw line. He's making Tech now 13 of 18 tonight from the line as Austin and Smith exchange. Smith will take a seat. Austin will move into the lane area. And now a three-point lead, 75-72. Obviously, this one is huge. 17 seconds to go. It'll take two possessions or something foolish by Tech for Houston to get in it. Goldwire, timeout. Well, <laughs> six seconds from coast to coast for Goldwire, and it's 76-74. You're James Dickey, you might have wanted a little bit more interference than that, but what a player. And what a game we've had here tonight. 76-74, 11 seconds remain between Texas Tech and Houston. Houston with a matchup against SMU next. That'll be on Saturday. And Texas Tech in their next outing will host TCU here Saturday. Time now for our, well, we'll take a look here on our GMC truck play of the game. Lance Hughes, after the steal, gets the slam. Lance Hughes has really exploded from inside and outside all over the court tonight. They get a super break. Nice long pass sets him up. And the rest of it's a coast. He does a little showtime there. Has to have some confidence to make that shot this late in the game. That bucket made it 74-70, and then Houston came back, missed. Flemons got the rebound, Outlaw stole it to make it 74-72 with his conversion. And Tech then comes back to get the free throws by Holly. Hughes with 27 tonight. That is a season high for Lance, his career high, 31 against Rice. And he had 26 against these Cougars last year, so he likes it Houston style. Well, Tech's got to get the basketball inbounds, basically, with 11 seconds. They have to get it in without much trouble. Clemens, and he'll go to the line. So three seconds tick off following the inbounds, and the Southwest Conference Player of the Year from last season will go to the line, Will Clemens. He's got 15 tonight as he goes to the line, and you see subs both ways as Austin comes back in for Smith, and Carrasco takes a seat for Houston in favor of Drain. Drain, an excellent three-point shooter, 46%, does not have enough attempts to qualify for the league stats, or he'd be the best in the league, so that's why they want him on the floor. Clemens makes it a three-point game again. So again, it's the second one now that could put him over the hump. 77-74 Tech. Gold wire. That's a three. And Tech will win. Texas Tech 78-74 over Houston. As a truck company for 90 years, we understand the value